Welcome to the Linear Low Density Polyethylene for Film short course. I'm going to explain what linear low density polyethylene is, the variations within the species, what they have in common, what makes them different, along with how they are made, and a bit of history to tie it all together. It's difficult to talk about linear low density without talking about the other densities, but that will be clear in a minute. A molecule is said to be linear when it has the personality more like spaghetti before it's cooked compared to spaghetti after it's cooked with a bunch of random chains like a shirt. A linear molecule has very little of what is called side chain branching. It's more crystalline than conventional polyethylene. There are three basic flavors of linear low density. Butene, hexene, and octene. You can tell by the size of the molecule which one is more complex and will yield a better product, and that's octene. Think regular, mid-grade, and premium unleaded. You marry these monomers up with the ethane monomer good old C2H4, string them together, and you got your polymer chains. What they have in common is that they have no what's called elastic memory, which means that it doesn't remember where it's been in the course of processing. This means that it will draw down or thin out. Think tappy when it's heated up compared to when it's cold. You can thin it out. When linear low came along, plant managers were early adopters because you could blend some of this in and it would keep from getting holes in the bubble. Maybe the bubble would have a thin spot here and there, but you wouldn't collapse the bubble. Now another term which is sort of related is that it has no elastic recovery in the finished product. You stretch it out, it just stays there, it won't snap back. Linear lows all have good elongation and they all have very smooth surfaces. So to get them to slide against each other, unlike these panes of glass which have a lot of surface contact, you have to add a lot of what's called anti-block or diatomaceous earth to make the surface more like sandpaper. Octene is better all around. It has, for some reason, a much better cold crack resistance. Not really a surprise because the molecules are bigger. So when you, it's like tugging on the spaghetti after it's cooked, you end up with, you're pulling on the whole pile rather than just one strand. And as you can imagine, butene is the cheapest. There's about a eight cent disparity per pound between all these. How they're made. Linear low has been around for a long time in the form of what's called sclare from DuPont, Canada. Sclare was made by what's called the solution phase, which means you have a bunch of pipes and you add things on here and take them off there and then come out with a really neat finished product. Union Carbide rocked the plastic world in 1978 with the advent of what's called unipole technology. Unipole means you take some of your, your monomer here and your other monomer here, bring them up together in the top of this big tower and then they precipitate and they rain down to get a big pile of resin which is about the consistency of detergent. Then it gets pelletized after that. Ever since the Unipol process came out. They've been trying to get to the good finished product properties of octene. Well, you can't get there from here. You can't create the finished properties of an octene on a Unipol reactor. You've probably heard of hexene linear level. Well, that means you add hexene monomer, which is not as expensive as octene, but it's more expensive than butene. You hear a lot of talk about what's called superhexene, which means that they just throw a lot more hexene at it. You just 
don't ever get there. The commercially available grades of Octene are Dow 2045, that was one of the earliest solution phase United States made linear lows. Uh, Dow 2056, which is like small batch bourbon. When they get a really good batch, they call it 2056, and they get a premium for it. The other one by Nova is FP120. By the way, it made all kinds of sense for Nova to buy the DuPont Sclair Works in Canada so they would have a full line. Now recently there have been some great strides with butene linear low, but it's like the old Hertz commercial. It's not exactly. So there you have it. That's the basic difference between the kinds of linear low. A little bit of history. Linear polyethylenes have been around for a long time. As you get up in density towards the higher end of the spectrum, like this milk crate, which is really stiff, it's probably about a 963, 965. The molecules are linear. And the good old blow molding grade, like for your milk jug, is a very common example. That's about a 957, 958. In the old days, they, were, they called these linear polyethylene. They didn't have another word for it. So when this linear low came out, we had to call it linear, but it's a linear low density. Just basics here. Anything from a 940 to 965, we're talking grams per cubic centimeter. This is less than a density of 1. It's considered high-density polyethylene. About a 930 to a 940, I guess it's called medium density. Below 930 is called linear low density. There are resins out there which are in this area here, and they're called linear medium density polyethylene, as the name implies. That's the basics. If you have any questions, please give us a call.